Located between the Italian peninsula and North Africa, and bang in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, the island of Sicily was a major commercial, cultural, and military crossroads of the ancient world. Carthaginians, Greeks, Romans, everyone passed by this island and left their mark on it. This resulted in a very diverse numismatic legacy. Not only was this legacy quite diverse, but extremely high quality. Some of the most beautiful coins struck in the ancient times were made on this island. So today we will explore some of the gorgeous coinage of Sicily. Let's go! For much of the classical period, the western part of the island was under the influence of the Carthaginians, as it was quite close to Carthage itself. Quite a few Punic colonies were founded in this area of the island, which leads us to the first coin of the day. Struck between 330 and 305 BC at the city of Lilibaeum, modern-day Marsala, this city became a base of operations for Carthaginian troops and a part of what we could consider the core of Carthage's territory, an area between Lilibaeum, the island of Sardinia and Carthage itself, as you can see on the map I'm putting on screen. It's almost like a defensive triangle. Carthage made extensive use of mercenary troops on their campaigns, and they intelligently adapted the iconography of the coins they struck on each region as to look more relatable to the mercenaries they hired there. This led to the creation of what we call today Siculopunic coinage. That means coinage, a coinage struck by Carthaginian authorities in Sicilian territory. The Greeks were clearly in superior numbers in the region, and they commonly had to rely on mercenaries of Greek origins, so the iconography they used on their coins was a mix of Punic and Greek designs. The obverse of this tetadrachma, for example, features a charioteer, a typical Greek design, driving a quadriga, a four-horses chariot. Over his head, we have Nike, the goddess of victory, crowning him with a laurel wreath. Nothing would imply this coin was Carthaginian, other than the lettering on the excerpt, the lower part of the design, which sadly was struck off line in this example. Here, we would find the abbreviation of Roche Melkart, the Cape of Melkart, which was the name the Carthaginians gave to the overall region of Western Sicily. Melkart was a Punic deity, closely associated to the Greek Hercules. Heading to the reverse, and it's it's so weird for me to see a bust on the reverse instead of the obverse, but since the legends were located on the obverse, it became a numismatic convention to call that side the obverse. In any case, here we have this marvelous bust of Persephone, the goddess of spring. She's very commonly shown in Sicilian coinage, coinage alongside the nymph Aretusa. Both are heavily associated to water springs, fresh water, so vital for everyone in the harsh, dry Sicilian cl climate. She is depicted in marvelous style, with a wreath made out of leaves, and around her head we can see a series of dolphins, a common sight for everyone who lived in the island. It is almost certain that Carthage hired Greek dye engravers to make these coins, as their style is nearly indistinguishable from some Greek coins we will see next. And then we get to the Greek colonies. The eastern and central parts of the island were colonized by settlers coming from all parts of mainland Greece. Chalcidians, Rhodians, Megarians, and even Corinthians are among some of the main groups of settlers. They came to the island between the 8th and 6th centuries BC quickly taking up much, as much territory as possible and constantly clashing with the Carthaginians to the west for supremacy over the island. So for the first Greek city-state we're looking at today, let's look at the city of Akragas, which was actually a colony of a Sicilian city, Gela, so a colony of a colony. Akragas is known nowadays as Agrigento and it's one of Sicily's main archaeological sites well worth a visit. The coin we're looking at today is also a tetadrachma, in this case dated between 465 and 445 BC. Akragas was a bit different to other city-states in the sense that it was very often ruled by tyrants instead of by democracies. One of such tyrants was Phalaris, who lived between 570 and 554. 
Valeris is, I wanted to talk about him because he was known for his cruelty, but more than just being cruel, he was known for introducing a torture and execution device called the Brazen Bull or the Bronze Bull. It was a hollow statue shaped as a bowl where a prisoner would be put into. A fire would then be lit under the statue, heating up the bronze and cooking the poor victim inside. The interior of the statue had a series of tubes and mechanisms which converted the screams of the victim into the sounds of a bellowing bow. But karma always comes to bite you in the ass. Faladis was deposed and was said to have been executed in the brazen bow. Okay, back to our coin here. Akragas drew inspiration on the local fauna for the design of this coin. On the obverse, we have this lovely depiction of a sea eagle and around the bird, we have the letters which spell Akragantos, the name of the city. On the reverse, which makes this coin very famous among numismatists, we have a crab, such an interesting animal to be found in a coin. Typically, we see plenty of fish, as it was one of the main products sold by these cities, but in this case, they decided to instead just pick a symbol, an animal that was immediately relatable, something every person who lived there saw every day. The crab is quite nicely sculpted, with its pincers pointing at different directions, giving the image a bit of dynamism. The shell is all full of bumps and irregularities, just like on the real animal, and under the design, likely an engraver mark or a control mark of some sorts, a flower with two short little tendrils coming out of it. Such a lovely coin, full of character. We then move to Leontini, a city on the eastern part of the island. Leontini is another case of a colony of a colony, as it was founded by colonists coming from Naxos, which itself was originally founded by settlers coming from the Greek mainland. Leontini is shown in the historical records to constantly have been under influence of the bigger cities, Catania and Syracuse, for example to its north and south, but just by the numismatic legacy of the city itself, we can see it must have been a prized possession for these cities, as its coinage is quite impressive, which denotes that the city was of some relevance. This example we have here dates from around the years 430 to 420 BC. On the obverse, we have this marvelous bust of Apollo wearing a laurel wreath. But what truly gives this coin charm, however, is the very creative reverse. Here we have a lion, a very fitting symbol for a city called Leontini, of course, with its name Leontinon in disjoint legends around the lion's head. On the outer edge, we have three heads of barley, an allusion to the fertile valley where the city was located. In fact, up to this day, the region is known for its very good soil. Originally, this design was supposed to feature four grains of barley, just like this other example I'm putting on screen right now. But in this case, one of them is replaced by a little leaf. And why would that be? Turns out this seems to be a very creatively disguised signature of a master engraver that went to multiple different cities in the region, offering his service and sculpting different dyes. A case of one of the world's first recorded freelance artists. Other cities struck coins in very similar style during this period, like this other tetadrachma from the city of Katane, and they all feature a small leaf somewhere on the design. In this case, we can see it behind Apollos' head. This engraver never had the courtesy of leaving as his name on the coins, so we couldn't know how to call him. So numismatists just call him Maestra della Foglia the Leaf Master engraver, engraver. And finally, of course, we could not talk about Sicilian numismatics without mentioning Syracuse, the main city in the region and a major player in Mediterranean geopolitics during the classical Hellenistic periods. Syracusan coins not only figure among some of the most beautiful of the ancient world, but they also seem to have been a huge source of pride for Sicilian dye engravers who worked at the Syracusan Mint, as many of them left their signature on their dyes. Let's look at this example struck while Syracuse was a democracy, between 415 and 405 BC. 
On the obverse, once more, counterintuitively, it's not a part of the coin featuring the portrait, we have once more the charioteer, quite disproportionately enlarged as to call the viewer's attention to him compared to the horses. He's once more driving the quadriga with all four horses, and they're so elegantly depicted, each one in its own little position, giving it a dynamic feel. It really looks like they're, ju they're just going forward. Above the chariots here, we have Nike crowning him, and under the design, we have a couple of dolphins, likely a control mark for that particular coin issue. Notice the little Epsilon Y monogram next to the horse's front legs. This is the signature of the engraver, a certain Eumenos. A series of Syracusan coins dies are attributed to him and have his signature. Looking at the reverse, we have Aretusa, the water nymph, considered the patron deity of the city. The bust of Aretusa is among some of the most famous portraits of numismatics alongside iconic images such as Athena on Athenian Tetadrachma or Augustus in the first Imperial Denarii. The hair of Arethusa is always depicted with this fluid, almost like fluffy aspect, evoking the idea that she's underwater and the water is sort of like flowing through her hair and generating this movement. Such a marvelous design. To reinforce the idea that we're seeing an underwater scene, we can see once more a series of dolphins swimming around her. And we can read around her head Syracusion or Coin of Syracuse. Once more, under the portrait, we also have the signature of Eumenos. What is incredible about the coinage of Sicily is that these coins I've shown you today are nothing but a tiny little scratch on the surface of what this island has to offer in terms of numismatic history. I really need to show more Sicilian coins in the future, and hopefully I will if I manage to get my hands on some more coins. What about you? Do you have the privilege of owning a coin of Syracuse, or Akragas, or any Sicilian cities? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing. I hope you all enjoyed it, happy collecting, and I'll see you soon.